This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. If you work as a scientist on molecular mechanisms of diseases, it's often a very abstract process. We speak in these scientific acronyms, three-letter words, that are not personal. When you talk to patients of a disease, it shows you the direct consequences of your work. And the importance, the urgency of your work becomes much more apparent. I was born with Treacher Collins Syndrome, and it affected the development of most of my facial skeleton. In the course of this work, we found a gene that encodes for a protein that is important for the cells to become those that make your bone structures. The patients lack one complete copy of that gene. Shortly after we published our work, I was contacted by Francis who was reaching out to scientists that worked on it and trying to interview them to raise awareness. You told us that you had surgery in the first days of your life, right? I have had more than 20 surgeries wow. involving reconstruction of eye sockets and cheekbones, the outer ears and both jaws and the palate, not to mention the tracheotomies from birth yes. and off and on later on with the jaw surgeries. They must be brutal because they, yeah, you told they me, were, right? <laughs> they were for me and I imagine they're, they still have an element of brutality to them although they're evolving. It's very hard for me to, to imagine this. Um, <laughs> I have two very young children and when they have a scratch I faint. So you're in a very special situation. You're a patient of a disease and you're studying the disease to some extent. How does um, you being a patient of the disease affect uh, what you do in the lab? That allows me to be a sort of ambassador between the scientific side and also my own life experience to others with similar challenges as well as to the greater public. Absolutely. I think that's a very important role. It strengthens my heart for the, the children and adults also affected by craniofacial uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. What you feel are the possible uh, advances that you see in prevention and treatment. Um, it's very difficult to predict because we're talking about developmental diseases that happen early. But I, I think that in the near future, if you ha especially with the advent of regenerative medicine, if you can actually help with tissue growth, that might be very naive. This might be out many years in the future, but you have to have important goals. That's right. I, I have a sense of quiet excitement about what is being found and the possibility in the future are a bright light in the tunnel of Treacher Collins syndrome. Meeting Francis was extremely inspiring, I think, for everyone in the lab. When you discover something, it has a deep meaning for patients. I think it met and probably exceeded my expectations. It takes it from the abstract words that we use to label proteins and genes into a real human being. Hopefully we can find ways to use our knowledge to convince a diseased cells to become those that make your bone structures. I want to continue a relationship with him because we're, we're a family of sorts. <laughs>